Hi, welcome to Sparper 101. I'm your host, Robert Rocha. I'm a structural technology specialist with the El Paso Independent School District. Recently, our focus has been on how to use, how to add interactivity into our smart notebook lessons. But today's focus is going to be a little bit different. We're going to show you how to add interactivity to anything that you have or can display on your computer itself. For instance, if you have an online textbook, you have a PDF, or even some different software that you'll be using with your students that you want to add interactivity with. Now, what Smart Tech has done is they've added a set of floating toolbars or a floating tool that allows you the same access to the Smart Notebook tools without actually having the Smart Notebook opened up. So let's take a look and see how that Smart uh, Tools, the floating tools will actually work. For instance, if I go back here to my computer screen, I'm down here in the very bottom, I've got my Smart Icon. That Smart Icon is, a, again, going to be that blue square with a round circle. When I click on that, the fifth one down says show floating tools. So if I click on that, notice now on my computer, you can barely see it, but if I go back to my computer screen, on the left hand side, you see a little tab of a double arrow and little dots that are right there. If I click on that double arrow, it opens up the floating toolbar, and you can see I have access to different tools that I can go with and use, such as a pen, a camera, the orientation, and a right click. But if you notice right now, it's kind of really hard to see because it's kind of conflicting with the different icons that are on the backhand side. So what I'd like to do as a tip from, from me is notice below the double arrows as I have these little dots. And those little dots allow me to move that toolbar to the other side of my computer screen. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that across. I'm going to place my finger and use constant pressure. And I'm going to drag it across. And I'm going to try that again. A little bit off. There we go. And I'm going to move it across here. And now I can better see my icons that I have. And it's no longer interfering with my different icons that I have on my left-hand side of my screen. And so as I grab and use the different pens in front of my students, let's say the first one I have, if I click on that, I can see now I've become a black pen. And I have a floating tool, my f overlay. And I can go and write or do anything I want to do on my smart board itself up here. I can write if I wanted to. Uh, if I wanted to erase that, notice I have access to my eraser. And you may go up here, and I can do a big circle around that and click in the middle, and it erases it all pretty much at the same time, almost. And I click on that, and it erases it. I also have access to a different uh, red pens that I have. I have access to also a highlighting, a highlighting piece there. But I'm going to close up my overlay real quickly and show you how that actually works as far as with an actual uh, web piece. So let's go to Firefox here and go to, go to the web. And I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, episd.org. And so, for instance, with my floating toolbar, let's say there's a website that you were going on for your students, or the, again, the online text, and I wanted to highlight this part about the Defense Secretary Panetta visits Chapin High School. What I can go and do now is take my highlighting pen, click on that, and now I can go and highlight that part of my passage. And so now you can create more emphasis on that particular part of your website with your students. Another item that you may have up here that you may not, that you may see is you also a, you also have a camera access. You can do that too. You have a right click that you can go ahead and use. You can open up Smart Notebook if you wanted to, and of course you have access to an online keyboard that you have. Now notice right now that when I take my cursor out of that particular floating toolbar. I'm still going to be that pen, so I've got to be very cautious that if I want to click on something, I have to go back to being that cursor. Okay? And when I'm done with that floating toolbar or done with the overlay, I can go and click on that red X on the top of my overlay and click on that and close it back up. And I, again, I just have my floating toolbar that's right there. Now, one thing I'll mention to you now is with the floating toolbar is you can customize it to any way that you want. So if there are certain tools that you like that you're not there right now, you can change it around. So how I would do that is if you notice on the bottom, bottom of that particular stack is I have a picture of a gear. If I click on that gear, it opens up a listing of all the tools that I could use. So for instance, let's say I really did not want to use my, let's say my right hand click. I can simply drag it out of here into the other screen, and I can no longer have that part of my toolbar. If I wanted to add something else, let's say I wanted to add the magic pen, 
I can go and grab the magic pen from here and go ahead and now place it on my toolbar where I wanted to go ahead and use it. So let's say I, have, I want to use that a lot, so we kind of place it higher up on my toolbar. And then there is my magic pen. Let me try that again. I didn't see it work. Let me try it one more time. And there it goes. There's the magic pen. And so once I've completed the actual icons or tools that I want to use or customize it with, I can go ahead and click on Done. And now I have access to that floating tool of the magic pen. So now if I write something, let's say I write here um, magic, it'll definitely go away in about 10 seconds or so. And I now have access to that magic pen, uh, any of the toolbars I want to use with my particular computer screen. So you can see that floating toolbar can be pretty handy when you're wanting to edit different items, whether it be, again, a PDF file or you want it to be a website, again, or even a software program. That, that toolbar follows you wherever you are on your computer screen. So it doesn't matter, again, where you're at. You can always open up that floating toolbar and have access to those particular pens that you may use or other tools that you feel you need to use in your lesson. That pretty much wraps it up for the actual floating toolbar. And if you see if you use it, sometimes you may not. But if you don't want to use that, you can click on the X up here. And I can go down to my toolbar. And I can go to High Floating Tools. And now it disappears. When I want it again, I can go back and go to Show Floating Toolbars. And it comes right back up again to where I left, left, it, left it. So I hope you like the Floating Toolbar. And again, that pretty much wraps up our show today. And I hope you use it in your classroom. Goodbye.